This is my drawing of a younger girl with a Japanese anime influence. And I've laid in the base tone of my skin. And I'm using a nice yellow Prisma pencil to create a good strong light on her hair. And as with most anime, a nice strong contrasting tone. You can see this hair is designed to be very specific graphic shapes. using my brush pen to keep my rendering loose. Now here I'm thinking less about highlights than just strong contrast between the lighter and the darker forms. And then I'm using my Prisma pencil for highlights and a nice marker liner to go back in and add the black outline that is again characteristic of the genre. Very precise. I also use the same liner for features as I will throughout the whole figure. Instead of a Prisma soft pencil outline, I'll have a harder black outline. And a nice strong color on the lips, leaving highlights. And a Prisma pencil makes an easy rendering tool for the eyes. And I want to give her some eyelashes, make her look cute, give her some makeup. See, I use that black to emphasize pretty much everything. And then a bit of white to add highlights and a good strong shadow under my hat. And May is very contrasty. I have to be bold. She's going to want a brown leather hat, so I'm going to lay in a base tone of a nice strong brown. Little bits of highlights. I add some stitching with my milky gel pen. Prisma just to pull out detail. And I'm creating metal studs and then highlighting them with my gouache. Makes them look very dimensional. I'm wanting a little stronger line on the black, so my black prism pencil will have a similar effect. Now she has on a little mesh top, but I'm going to lay my skin tones in underneath that because it is transparent. And also, of course, my top will cast shadow. And I make these shadows very definite. This is not about blending. dimension cast shadow. Now my base tone on my, I have a pale purple outfit and so I'm laying in the base tone with a q-tip. See I'm starting out very soft. Of course I have gathers, ruffles, it's a lot going on so I have to take careful steps in rendering. I'm doing the mesh of my little top. Prisma pencil, being very definite, keeping the movement going so I get nice integrated line. And I want this to look delicate, so I, again I keep it soft. And defining the drop, you can see it's a bias, so it's dropping very gracefully down from the neckline. Let's go back in and blend my Prisma with marker. I use my second tone on my outfit. Use a 
shade that is compatible with the base tone. And my top also is a purple, so I'm adding a little bit of shade to that. And then going in and shading my ruffles. Each ruffle will cast a shadow. my light source coming from the left this time, so I'm putting primary shadow on my right side. You can see how I'm also pulling out the body with the shadow. This prisma, pulling out detail, emphasizing the drape. And it gathers at the top of my little it's like a crystal pleated top. So the little pleats are very, very fine. So I like to have my pencil very sharp. Remember your electric pencil sharpener is your best friend. Adding a bit of pleats also with a marker. back and see if you've got enough shadow so you don't overwork. You can see I can blend with my Q-tip. It makes it softer. It integrates your different shades together. And then, of course, we marry with line. It's the shade and the line that create the dimension and the contrast. details you have, the more you have to make sure that everything, all the elements stay separate from each other. That's my brown leather belt with fringe, so I'm going to lay in a nice loose stroke for each fringe and also leave a nice highlight on my belt, get some contrast, making sure I don't lose my drawing by rendering too quickly and carelessly. And she's got her coordinating leather bracelets. Of course, the younger the girl, probably the more accessories she likes. So your junior figures will have a lot of accessories. Now my white prism is adding some highlights. And I'm creating studs on gloves to go with her mesh top. You can see it shows up best where the skin tone is dark. I'm adding a bit of purple so they blend with the outfit. Balance between the line and texture. everywhere, but you want to define certain strands and cross over. Stitching makes the belt more real, more dimensional. Now I'm creating studs on the belt. to go in and add the highlights so they stand out and they look dimensional. Of course, my fringe will cast shadow, so I use my purple underneath. Integrating the elements without losing them. My skirt needs to cast a good, strong shadow, and then I use tone to define the leg. You may want to plan these shapes ahead of time because they are so strong you don't want to, don't want to be 
too spontaneous if you're not used to doing this. Now, of course, her cowboy boots. Brown to match the other brown leathers. I've drawn in some detailing so they don't just become a shape. I can separate the various parts with my rendering. Adding a contrast tone. See, I'm separating side plane from front from top plane. side plane. Using my black to create a nice strong shadow. And now some shine. Very precise heel and sole. Always leaving bits of highlight. in like other gel pens. You can see how important it is that your shapes are correctly drawn, otherwise the rending will just emphasize your mistakes. of paint and flat marker. 